When we looked at differentiation, we discovered the derivative of the natural log of x was 1 over x. So we can say d dx of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. If you need to review that, please check out my site here, as there's a full tutorial on it. If we looked at a function of a function and we differentiated with respect to x, for example, the natural log of, let's say, 3x squared plus now 7x plus 2. Informally, we write this as 1 over the inside function of 3x squared plus 7x plus 2 multiplied through by the derivative of the inside function, which would have given us 6x plus 7. Now, let's look at the integral of this. If we had the integral now of 6x plus 7 over now 3x squared plus 7x plus 2, this would suggest that we're going to get now a log function as the answer. The way we can spot these now is that we have the derivative in the numerator and the original function in the denominator. So in general, what we can say then is the integral of k, where k is simply a constant, of f dashed of x over now f of x, if we are integrating this with respect to x, we're going to have now k multiplied by the natural log of the modulus of the f of x plus a constant. We have to take now the modulus as we can't log negative numbers for real values. So that's what we end up with. So what we're doing is spotting that in the numerator it's either the exact derivative or some multiple of it. So let's look at an example of that. Let's say I've got now the integral of 2x over the quantity x squared plus 3 and I'm asked to integrate this with respect to x. Now we know the derivative of x squared is 2x, therefore the derivative of x squared plus 3 is going to be 2x. So we could write this now as the natural log of the modulus of the f of x, which is x squared plus 3 plus a constant. As we can see here, we don't need the modulus bars. This is never going to be negative, but it's a good habit to get into initially when you're doing this. OK, so that's an example of that. So we've got the derivative over now the original function. Let's look at another one. Let's say we've got now, uh, let's put now in the numerator cos x. Let's put cos x in the numerator. And then we've got 1 plus sine x in the denominator. And we're integrating this with respect to x. Now, with inspection or uh, integration by recognition, we should start spotting things and saying, hang on a moment, cos x is a derivative of sine x. So the derivative of 1 plus sine x is going to be cos x. So we could say now that this is going to be the natural log of the modulus of 1 plus sine x. So that's what we'd end up with, and then we simply bolt on a constant of integration. If we were asked, for example, now to find the integral of, let's go for e to the x plus 1 over now, uh, and then we had, let's say we've got e to the x plus x plus 3. Now if I look at that, that looks quite daunting. But if we consider now that the numerator is the derivative of the denominator, we could write this now as the natural log of the modulus of e to the x plus now x plus 3 plus a constant of integration. Now, let's say that we actually had, in this case, uh, let's say it wasn't as obvious. Now, we might have, for example, 6e to the x uh, plus now, uh, let's go for 6 over this scenario right here, where we have e to the x plus x plus 3, and we're asked to integrate this. Now, you might not spot this straight away, but what I, I could do here, and this is a long-winded way around, I could just write now 6 lots of e to the x plus 1. I'm now going to multiply that by the log of the modulus of e to the x plus x plus 3, and simply now divide through by the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 1 over e to the x plus 1. Then I'm going to have my constant. What this allows for now is that these values will simply drop off. So that will give us now 6 lots of the natural log of the modulus of e to the x plus x plus 3 plus a constant. In the same way, you could have done that here. So for example, now if we had, uh, let's say we got 2 cos x, um, over now, let's say, let's say that we've got 2 cos x plus, uh, let's go for plus 2 now, 
and then we've got uh, this now over, let's say we've got uh, 2 sine uh, 2 sine x, let's write back there, plus 2x plus 7. So let's go ahead and look at this. Now, you might not spot this straight off, but what we could write is as follows. We could write 2 cos x plus 2. Now, I'm going to multiply that by the natural log of the modulus of 2 sine x plus now 2x plus 7 and divide through by the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be now 2 cos x plus 2. Now, we can see that they're going to cancel off. So if it's not blindingly obvious, this is an option for you. It's not the most sophisticated of techniques, but it is there if you wanted to look at it. So all I've said to myself is I'm going to just leave that out front right now, the denominator as two as the natural log of 2 sine x plus 2x plus 7, and then simply divide through by the derivative of the inside function. OK, let's look at a subtle quirk of this. Let's say we've got the integral now of tan x. Now, when we're integrating uh, trig functions, often it's a case of just saying to yourself, well, what was that before? So, for example, if we had now sine x, the integral of sine x is going to be equal to minus cos x. Because if we differentiate cos x, we get minus sine x. Therefore, now, if we differentiate minus cos x, we're going to get sine x. If I had now sec x tan x, then the integral of sec x tan x is going to be sec x. As we know, sec x gives us now a derivative of sec x tan x. If we had now the integral of sec squared x, and all of these are with respect to x, we know that we get tan x plus a constant, as if we differentiate tan x, we get sec squared x. If we had now uh, cosec, let's write this here, cosec x cot x, then the integral of this is going to be minus cosec, so minus cosec x plus a constant. The derivative of cosec x is minus cosec x cot x. Now, we don't really know what this is going to be. So what we're going to do is use a little trick here. And we're going to write this in terms of sine and cosine. So what we've got is sine x over cos x. So we're integrating this. Now, at this stage, I could just simply go ahead and write that this is going to be minus the natural log of cos x plus a constant. Or we could write this now as the natural log of the modulus of sec x using log laws. So if you consider I'm bringing the negative one up, 1 over cos x is sec x. Now, if you didn't spot that, what I've done here is simply said, well, I've got sin x multiplied by the natural log of cos x divided through by the derivative of the inside function, which is minus sin x. So those are going to cancel, and I'm simply left with minus ln of the modulus of cos x plus a constant. So as you can see, often this approach kind of helps. But what we're looking at now is that this now is some k value now multiplied by the f dashed of x over the original function, which gives rise now to the integral being the natural log of the modulus of that f of x. Let's just try one more. Um, and then we're going to come back to this. When we look at partial fractions, we'll come back and look at some of these. But for now, this is sort of a brief intro. Uh, let's look now at the integral of sine x cos x over now. Let's go for uh, let's go for cos two x plus three. Now this one looks a bit of a mess, and we could do some things with it. Now I know that uh, sine two x is two sine x cos x. So what I could actually write now is that this is going to be one half the integral of sine two x over cos 2x plus 3. So I've used a trig identity. Now with this one we can now see that this right here in the numerator is some derivative of the denominator. So if I consider that, if I differentiate cos 2x, I'm going to get minus 2 sine 2x. Now at this stage, if you were unsure, what you could do is write 1 half sine 2x multiplied by the natural log of the modulus of cos 2x plus 3, divided now by the derivative of the inside function, which is minus 2 sine 2x. We've done plenty of work on differentiation. We should hopefully know cos 2x using the chain rule gives us minus 2 sine 2x. So we can see from here that these are going to cancel, and we're going to have now minus 1 over 4, the natural log of the modulus of cos 2x plus 3 
plus a constant. And that is very subtle, but we can see that this is some form of derivative. This is some form k f dash of x over now the f of x, which gives rise to now k natural log of the modulus of the f of x plus a constant. And again, this is a bit of recognition. So it kind of um, goes hand in hand with the first video we've looked at. So there are some basic examples. So you're always looking out now for the derivative in there. What we'll do in the next video is, or the video after is look when we've got partial fractions as well and integrating logs. Uh, so for example, now let's just do one more. Let's say we've got, uh, let's say we've got now this scenario. Let's say we've got um, x minus one uh, over x. Say we were asked to integrate that. Okay, if we consider integrating this, what we've got is the following. And one way that we could deal with this is to split the numerator. So we'd have now x over x is going to give me 1. Then we can have minus 1 over x dx. So that is what we're actually integrating here. Integrating 1 with respect to x, that's nice and easy. That's just x. And then 1 over x is the natural log of the modulus of x. And then we'd have a constant. So we can use it for things like this as well, to split up these fractions. And often when we come to use a u substitution, we will end up with scenarios such as, for example, now u plus 2 over u du. And this will now lead us to u plus then we'll have 2, the natural log of the modulus of u plus a constant. And I'll let you work out why that, um, that goes because um, I've gone through that fairly quickly. So there we go, integrating log functions when we have the derivative of the original function in the numerator or some form of it and then the original function in the denominator.